तीसरा है ये यही कह रहे थे ना ये बड़ा बैरियर टूटेगा नहीं किसानों से तोड़ दिया देख ले आखिर The three farm bills passed hurriedly by the parliament are first uh, the farmers produce uh, trade and commerce bill uh, aiming to create and promote uh, private markets for crops outside the ambit uh, of the government regulated APMC mandis farmers agreement uh, of price assurance and farm services bill is the second one and this attempts to promote uh, contract farming uh, within indian agriculture and thirdly the essential uh, commodities amendment bill 2020 uh, which removes various uh, crops including cereals and vegetables uh, from the list of essential commodities and the implication of this is that it basically does away with the uh, restrictions on hoarding of these commodities by private traders now private trade in agricultural commodities is not new in this country uh, less than a quarter of agricultural commodities are actually traded in government regulated mandis so the first and the third bills at this point of time uh, in indian uh, economy are really about facilitating big corporate capital in, into the farm sector and the second bill on contract farming is to integrate uh, the indian farmers into the corporate uh, food supply chains which actually are a global phenomenon mare kisano ke paas koi aisa kanoon nahi rahega ki hum apna court mein hamara pakh rakh sake ye sabse zyada ye do pareshaniyan hai isme hai इसको लाजमी इसको सुधार करना पड़ेगा नहीं तो लोकसभा जो यहाँ बनी हुई है जनपद जो इसका है वो हमसे बहुत दूर नहीं है हम पंद्रह बीस किलोमीटर पीछे बैठे हुए हैं हम लोकसभा हमारे लोग जो किसान लोग हैं ये लोकसभा में जाके बैठेंगे and um, it is quite right for the farmers to be extremely worried about this so there has been an incentive for many decades now for the advanced countries to try to gain access all over again to the lands of today's developing countries as they had in the colonial past but of course they can cannot get access in the old form because they no longer have political control so the access they try to get is in new forms which are suited to the present era they have been constantly badgering developing countries to remove all their protective measures and to open up to free trade once more and they have been constantly badgering the developing countries to say that their own governments should not engage in procuring food grains but should go to the global market
The government's uh, justification for passing these bills is that the farmers will receive better prices for their crops as a result of private trade offering them more choices. Now, given that uh, private trade uh, in agricultural commodities has existed for a very long time in India, and uh, farmers have nonetheless faced considerable periods of declining or stagnated prices over the last three decades. Therefore, this reasoning seems spurious. So it's not just food, it's also all kinds of luxury products. And what they want is a division of labor in which tropical countries, which are biodiverse, which have multi-cropping, which are much more productive than ours, divert more and more of their land and resources to filling up supermarket shelves, especially in winter, with the produce they cannot produce themselves. And they say that, look, we have a surplus of food grains. So why do you want to produce food grains at all? You should source your food requirements from the global market. That is the redefinition of food security, with the result, of course, that a lot of progressive movements have said that we don't want food security, we want food sovereignty. Food security in the sense that the IMF, World Bank, North America defines it, is not good enough. We can't rely on the global market. We have to have food sovereignty in our countries. We have to have the freedom to be able to decide our own cropping pattern in such a manner that we continue to produce enough basic staple food grains for our own, own population. The farmer's income uh, is dependent on various factors. It, it is dependent on what happens to crop prices due to market demand and supply conditions, and simultaneously also what happens to input prices. Uh, encouraging farmers into big capital controlled uh, contract farming is akin to pushing them into a high cost structure agriculture. Now, given that the current pandemic and the associated massive income and job losses have created a demand crunch in the economy, a severe demand crunch actually, and that this comes on top of an already existing economic slowdown in the pre-pandemic times, uh, this is definitely not the right time for such a reform. So we cannot afford to let this superior purchasing power draw away our products to alter the cropping pattern of our lands. And this is something that I've been talking about for 25 years. But the advanced uh, countries find the fact that our governments operate procurement and public distribution system, particularly in food grades, they find this a hindrance to their aims. And they want us to give it up completely. जैसे पहले जियो का सम जारी किया था इन्होंने पहले लोगों में फ्री बांट दिया उसके बाद अभी वो 600 का रिचार्ज होता है वैसे ही इन्होंने इस इसकी एमएसपी या जो वो कानून में बिल्कुल नहीं लिखा उसका जल्दी से जल्दी ये अंडानी बाननी है जो प्राइवेट दारा होगा वो हमसे अभी जो हम 1900 बे� the claim that contract farming will protect farmers from price fluctuations is not immediately verified. Since typical contracts that corporates uh, draw up with farmers have certain non-price clauses related to quality and safety aspects of farming, and uh, which uh, these clauses are often used by the corporate companies to deny the pre-agreed price to the farmers. <laughs> अभी भी समय है शाम तक का कल सुबह तक का अभी भी तीनों काले कानून वापस ले ले उसमें एक लाइन ऐड कर दे कि एमएसपी की गारंटी क्या कानून बना दे बना दे अभी भी समय है नहीं तो ये किसान या तो गोली मार ले भी इनका
या तो गोली मार ले नहीं तो और कोई तरीके से ये रुक ही नहीं सकते